Nicole Auerbach joins us now for more perspective on this. Nicole, we heard Howard Griffiths say he'd been hearing for a little bit. There were some whispers that perhaps this might be coming uh, a few days ago. Had you heard anything like this or were you completely surprised? Uh, very, very surprised. I mean, I think that there were a lot of rumblings throughout the league and throughout the coaching community throughout the season that Mark Antonio would potentially be stepping down at the end of the season. But when, you know, December comes and goes and he, you know, makes his, uh, you know, pretty convincing statements and, and comments in the press conference where it seemed like he was all in on continuing to do this um, and was going to evaluate his staff again in the off season, And then there was this period of silence, you know, you're thinking, well, is that still the plan? But, but again, it was, it was so convincing what he had said towards the latter part of the season um, that it surprised a lot of people then but I think it sort of died down. So I'm just surprised that this didn't happen in December, um, you know, especially from a recruiting standpoint, a coaching search standpoint, and all of that. Um, that's really where the surprise is. But the day before National Signing Day, I did not see that coming. What do you think? What were the successes in his career? In other words, how did he help turn this Michigan State program from such an inconsistent one to one where he's winning double-digit games frequently? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I was assigned to Michigan State um, the year that they made the playoffs, so I spent a lot of time around that particular team. Um, you know, and, and that was kind of like that perfect, um, you know, the, the epitome of what he was trying to build. It was a lot of guys who were, you know, lightly recruited or under-recruited, overlooked. Um, you know, it was this chip on the shoulder vibe, and that really was the, the personality and identity of this program. It was, we're going to take the three-star guys, we're going to work really hard, and we are going to develop them into pros. And his best teams had a lot of players like that on both sides of the ball. But, you know, his teams were, no, were known for just being really tough defensively. Um, you know, the no-fly zone and all of those things um, were, were really part of how he built this thing and, and really kind of why it's kind of papered off these last few years. He, he hasn't had those types of talents, um, you know, who they built into NFL prospects in the way that they did you know, when they were winning Big Ten championships and in the playoff race and, and all of that just a few years ago. You know, I was talking with Howard Griffith a moment ago about his personality and how he's, he, D'Antonio had a very stoic way about him, but when you talk to him away from a camera or something, he would lighten up. He had a pretty decent sense of humor. He would talk about whether it's building a deck in his front yard or being really good at playing billiards at home. There was another side to him. I also felt, Nicole, as a football coach, he had that different side. I mean, he would bring out trick plays more frequently than you would think for a stoic coach. We're talking the Charlie Brown against Nebraska in 2013, the Mousetrap versus uh, Northwestern. You had Sandlot, the Little Giants. I mean, he would have fun with his play calls at times. Well, and they all had great names, which is, you know, <laughs> even better than some of the plays themselves. But, you know, he, he really did um, have a lot of those moments in the course of his career. I mean, you just listed off a bunch of those, and those are, you know, huge moments for Michigan State fans over the years. Um, but, yeah, no, he, his, his public persona and the way that, you know, we, we all kind of picture him is this, like, frowning guy who takes everything very seriously. But you're right. He did have that other side to him. I think that's probably what we're probably going to see a little bit more of, even, in he, even if he's in a less public-facing role in whatever role he takes within the athletic department. Because I think, you know, that, that's the hardest part for coaches when they retire is not having those relationships with the players. And, um, you know, one thing that I, I kept thinking about, um, I guess, in the last hour is that one of the last, you know, kind of images we have was him, um, you know, on a senior night and playing with the dogs that are running out there. <laughs> Um, and, and smiling, and, and it, it was unusual to get to see that, you know, kind of in his coach setting, in his public setting. Um, but I do imagine, like, that's the part that he's going to enjoy about his new role in the athletic department, still having those relationships, still getting to do that. And uh, just without all the football stress, the recruiting year-round, and all the stuff that, you know, these coaches are retiring for. I mean, Chris Peterson, you know, also retired this offseason abruptly. Um, and, you know, there's just a lot of things that I, I don't think coaches want to really put up with anymore. So, um, you know, one of those things for him, because he is someone who, you know, prizes loyalty so much, was really having to make staff changes. That was something he didn't want to do last year. He reshuffled the offense, and that was a point of contention for the fan base this year because it didn't really improve anything. But he's a loyal guy. He does not like to fire his friends. Um, and, you know, you've got to imagine that that also played into the decision to, to step away instead of really having to fire your friends.
Right, and I also remember he started doing post-game dancing after victories. He told me in the spring game of 2013 that he learned it from Dabo Swinney. That Dabo Swinney said, you work so hard and you win a game, you have to celebrate. Otherwise, what's the point of it? And he liked that idea, and he started embracing that. Nicole Auerbach, thank you as always for your time. We appreciate it. All right, thanks for having me.